Hello photographers! Shutter speed. The amount of time that little metal curtain inside your camera remains open. It can be one full second, it can be one one thousandth of a second. Many cameras actually have a shutter speed as fast as one eight thousandth of a second, and most cameras with a locking uh, cable release can hold the shutter open for as long as you need. Hours even. Think star trails. Which shutter speed you use depends on the situation and the effect you're trying to attain. Are you trying to stop the action or are you trying to convey a sense of motion? As mentioned in the previous video, aperture and shutter speed work in conjunction to determine how much light gets through to the sensor. If you're using a wide aperture, you're gonna need a faster shutter speed. And if you're gonna use a smaller aperture, you'll need a slower shutter speed. Now, while the aperture affects the depth of field, the acceptable range of focus in a scene, the shutter affects the sense of motion and action in the scene. Let's say your kids are playing in the backyard with their friends, running around chasing the dog. And let's say you're going to photograph the scene using a shutter speed of 1 250th of a second. Uh, the resulting photograph is likely going to depict the kids in a, a state of suspended animation. Perfectly still, sharply rendered. Let's say, however, you photograph the same scene only using 1 60th of a second or 1 30th of a second the photograph is probably going to depict them with a little bit of a blur, you know, a good sense of movement. Now let's say you're on vacation, at the beach for, for instance, and you want to take a scenic photograph. So you take the tripod down to the beach and you point it out at the ocean, and if you use a fast shutter speed, you're going to see the waves in mid-break. If you use a slow shutter speed, you're going to get a nice silky smooth blur of the water. How dramatic and how great of a blur depends on how long a shutter speed you use. 1 second, 5 seconds, 15 seconds, experiment, try everything. Another thing to consider is panning. Let's say you're walking down the street and someone on a bike is coming your way. Take the camera and focus on them as they approach and follow them as they go by, clicking the shutter the whole way. You could end up with a really cool photograph because what will happen is the bicyclist will be relatively sharp throughout and the background will be blurred like this. It'll give a great sense of speed and motion. Now, this can be done with the kids in the backyard as well or with a bird flying past. A lot of different things. As with anything, practice, practice, practice. Get out there and experiment. Play around with different shutter speeds. Uh, keep the good photographs, delete the crap, and I promise your Facebook slideshows will improve overnight. Anyway, Thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful. Be sure to check out the other videos in the series and stay tuned for more in the coming weeks. And so until next time, good light and good shooting. See you.